welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode number four of our rebooted podcast. Uh, to my kind of in front of me now, not yeah, even right. my left, but hey, it's your guys' is right. We have the co-host, as always, Mr. Eric Moore. Hello. Rocking the sexy Zelda shirt to oh, yeah. Jesse. Well, because I wore blue and then I blended into the background, so... I yeah. mean, that's your own problem. No, you I know. get that blue is my favorite color. No, I know. Um, I know. <laughs> uh, and then, obviously, we have up on the TV for you guys, Mr. Captain Bergeson. Hello, that's me. You guys, if you I even know who he is. I have a sexy Zelda shirt. Uh, <laughs> there you go. There that's you true. Go. That's true. Uh, if you even know who he is, uh, I'd be surprised. But if you do, it's from the probably the Hylian Games cast over at Game Over Jesse's channel. Uh, we just had Game Over Jesse on a couple weeks ago. He actually showed up. So, how about that? There you go. <laughs> progress. Right, right. We're making progress with that guy. Um, all right. So, I guess let's just get this thing started. Uh, we have uh, just like three things to talk to you guys. There's no like major news that's been happening per se, uh, unless all you care about is Switch Pro, and we just did a whole episode on that last week. Uh, so. Let's talk about Mario's 35th anniversary because it comes to an end this month. All right. Pretty mm-hmm. much everything that was going to happen mm-hmm. for it has already happened. All the Splatfest, the Animal Crossing content's out now. Uh, we have uh, even the, the Super Nintendo World is now open, which wasn't part of the celebration, but it's, Just it's all Mario themed. Mm-hmm. So it might as well be part of the celebration. They have that open out in Japan now. Uh, but I think the, the the biggest reason to well, there's really two reasons to talk about the 35th anniversary of Mario. One, did Nintendo do a good job and do enough? Two, Nintendo's doing something that only Nintendo does, and that is at the end of this month, two Mario games, well, four altogether, are just vanishing, like they don't exist mm-hmm. anymore. Um, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, nice reminder that Mario 35, which you only play if you're a part of uh, the Nintendo Switch Online service, uh, and then Super Mario 3D All-Stars is gone physically and digitally. So it's not just going out of print. won't even be in the eShop. It just doesn't exist anymore. So what are your guys' thoughts on Nintendo? First of all, let's start there with uh, eliminating games. What are your guys' thoughts on this and why Nintendo is doing it? And are we ever going to see these games again? And was this even a good idea for them? Because it kind of, it almost feels like a sour way to end the 35th anniversary of Mario. Anyone? Go ahead. Well, I, like the obvious answer I want to say is that the generate demand thing, right? The the whole, it's a limited time, so you have to buy it. It's an now or never thing, and it entices people that way. But then Mario 35 is not really a, it's, it's pretty, pretty much a free game. So I almost feel like that line of reasoning doesn't work for that game, unless it's that they don't want to keep servers up or running or devote those resources to it well, for too long or I something. I mean, Tetris, but... N- Tetris 99 is free and has been for a while. That's true. But they also sell Great. a physical version now. So you could buy it. Mm-hmm. You don't have to have the online service. So like... Mario 35 is a lot of fun. It, 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 I understand that, like, who cares? It was free, but it's also, yeah, but now we just don't have it at all. Like, at least Tetris mm-hmm. 99, to take that away, you can still buy and play it if you want. So, true, it, yeah, true. Yeah. Like, for people who care about game preservation, it's kind of a, whoopsies, we're just not going to be here anymore. Have a good day. Yeah. Um. So, okay. So, like, Mario 35 is is yeah, it, it's really neat and I think there's some hopes out there for like a DK40 or a Zelda 35 or something like that this year who knows uh, maybe that's why it's, it's going away because they're going to replace it with another similar game from another franchise potentially so I can maybe see a justification for that mm-hmm. but 3D All-Stars the game has sold probably at this point 10 million copies and I get that part of the reason it sold so well is that fear of missing out. The FOMO right. Nintendo yes, created sure. by saying, hey, you can only get this game for a very small, limited amount of time. But at the same point, dude, it's a game that sold 10 million copies. Why are they discontinuing it? I, I, it's like leaving money out there that they could just keep trickling. Like, literally right now, if they just said, hey, look, we're done. Like, we're not going to, uh, you know, get rid of it. Nobody's going to be mad about that. Yeah. No. 
so no, they'd be they're just like leaving zero. money at, like they'd be like oh Nintendo listened to our feedback. That's yeah. great. It would be a good yeah. PR move, actually. Right. Like, yeah, like yeah, for sure. The only the only thing I could think of is if Nintendo is that greedy, which they might be, and they're just going to get rid of 3D All Stars so they could sell these games individually later that's and sell them for a possible. higher price, like yeah, thirty bucks possible. a pop, forty bucks a pop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I have I have a theory that yeah these games are going away, but they're going to go away kind of like the NES Classic did for a little bit, right? They're going to go away, come back. They said that was a limited run. It came back. I have a feeling mm-hmm. that, like, in in part, touching off what you said, that uh, they're going to sell these games individually. They're going to take it away now, wait till Zelda's anniversary is done, let that have its run, and then bring back the Mario games, possibly individually, maybe bring back All-Stars, but... I have a feeling that may be what they're doing. Yeah, I I think it's a stupid move. Mm-hmm. I can't think of any, like, positive... Like, yeah, I get that the Nintendo can sell more, for, more individually later. People are just going to look for used copies of 3D All-Stars instead of buying those games. And because it sold $10 million, there'll be plenty of used copies out there to buy. So I, mm-hmm. I just don't... I don't see a benefit for... Even if... I, like, let, let's presume that, like Mario 35, they're replacing it. With a Zelda 35th collection, right? Mm-hmm. Because right now, we only know for Zelda, we only know Skyward Sword HD. We don't know about any other games, including Breath of the mm-hmm. Wild. We don't even know, we know we're going to get news about Breath of the Wild, but we don't know if it's actually going to be releasing in the window of the 35th anniversary. So, I think it will be. But, we'll talk about more, about, more on that later. Uh, but I think that we need to, e- e- even if they were going to replace it, I don't think that... A, a 3D Zelda All Stars deters sales from a Mario 3D. All- they're, they're different kinds of games. Yeah, there's some audience overlap with Nintendo fans, but I mean that's mm-hmm. like saying, "Hey, look, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out. We better stop selling Mario Odyssey. It might impact I, sales." I, I think I think part of it has to do with generating as much sales right away as you possibly can. Yeah, I, I and, and, and I then, understood that to a point, but I understood mm-hmm. that before Animal Crossing blew up. Because I can see Nintendo saying, oh, we're in a pandemic. We're not going to have as many games coming out. We need to push sales. So let's make this right. a limited time thing. And instead, they had the best sales year ever. They had a game sell more copies for a uh, exclusive game than in the history of exclusive games that aren't pack-in. So they mm-hmm. didn't, by the time they announced Mario 3D All-Stars, they didn't need it to be that game anymore. And they that's before we knew that things like Age of Calamity was going to come out. Bowser's Fury and 3, 3D, you know, Mario and Bowser's Theory blew up as well. That's selling incredibly well. So I, it's one of those, I could see them doing it like a year ago where they're thinking, okay, maybe we got to worry a little bit. But then by the time it came to announce it, it's kind of like, okay, we don't need to do that. We don't need a boost in sales. I, I Like... <laughs> And Nintendo's not a company to me that ever feels like they're worrying about, we need to do something right now. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, Shintura Furukawa factually said they view it as do or die every year, but by the time they had the 35th uh, Mario announcements, they weren't dying. They were doing (laughs) quite well. Yeah. So, the only thing I can think of, the only one justification I can see for what they're doing. Guys, remember the NES and SNES classics? Yeah. Of course, uh, obviously. So, like the the, the NES Classic <laughs> oh, yeah. game in particular, they stopped making it. Right, it was a limited time thing. People got right. pissed. Okay, the SNES Classic comes out. People are like, "What the hell are we going to do about the like? We still want the NES. Why are you bringing out the SNES?" They brought the NES Classic back and saw a massive boost in sales. Mm-hmm. So, the one thing I can think of is they're thinking, "Look, we always do this evergreen thing, right?" We we sell a million. You know, say we sell a million next quarter, mm-hmm. a million the quarter after. What if we just stop? and create an artificial demand and then a year from now bring it back for a month and in that month sell four or five million instead of selling trickle sales all along because like hey we're bringing it back for a limited time i think you can only do that for so for so long until people catch on to what you're doing and then that just basically (laughs) stops being productive they haven't done it with a game yet See what I'm saying? Uh, no, they, no, they, they I know. With, they did it with a, you're right, you're right. a, a piece of hardware. You're right, you're right. But that they always said was limited, and then demand was so high, they're like, well, we're stupid. we got to make more. Well, right. And granted, we're not saying demand for 3D All-Stars is super high at the moment. I mean, it's high right now because people are worried they can't get it. 
but it's also mm-hmm. not nearly as high as it was at launch. So clearly, it's the, the demand has degraded a little because it's bet. I mean, go to the eShop, buy it right now. It's not that hard to get. Mm-hmm. You know, stores have a lot of con- like people. I think there's this impression that we're going to get to April first, and you just can't find the game anymore. Well, you can't find it on the eShop. I'm sure there'll be stop but stocks everywhere. There, yeah, they're still printing <laughs> copies of it all the way up through the 31st. Right. There's going to be new mm-hmm. shipments factually of the game landing in early April. Yeah, you just won't You're be able to be find able it to digitally. Get this game in, going in the summer, and then in the summer, by the time Mario Golf hits, it might be pretty hard to find a, a new physical copy out there. Um, but it, it's an interesting strategy, and I don't, I don't. Like, here's the thing: I own a copy. And I kept thinking to myself, would I own a copy of 3D All-Stars if they didn't do this? Because I think I'm the consumer they were trying to target, someone who really wasn't interested in it in the first place. Um, not because I don't like mm. the games, but because, honestly, I'm not a person that replays games a lot unless they're very specific games, like Zelda games. I replay those. But I don't really replay Mario games. Like Mario Odyssey, haven't touched that thing in two years. Haven't had a reason to. They didn't release DLC, so... Haven't had a reason to Which turn I'm the game on. Which I'm kind of surprised they haven't, you know, well, drug that along that a little bit. That was a surprise. That's, a, that's actually mm-hmm. one of the rumors out there that that's why we're getting Mario Odyssey 2 eventually here because they had so many ideas for content. They said, hey, let's make a new game. Yeah. Which supposedly is what happened with Breath mm-hmm. of the Wild 2 as well. Right, but right. Yeah. Who knows? Um, so I think that wh- when I think about what they're doing with Mario, I just think they are making a situation, uh, creating a situation that... In hindsight, they don't need. But then again, did it work because I ended up buying one? But did I buy it because of the fear of missing out? Or did I buy it because my YouTube channel was blowing up at the time? <laughs> yes. well, I, it, it begs the question, like, maybe they didn't need to do it, but they still made a lot of money doing it anyway. So but as a Nintendo, company, it's a like win-win. a business first. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, there's no reason not to just because you don't have to. I think I don't have to eat a bucket of Nutella sitting on my couch at 10 p.m., but I, I still do it. Yes, yeah. So. Well, my, my, okay, so my thing is, fine, discontinue the physical, but why? Mm-hmm. I mean, why get rid of digital? What do you have to lose getting rid of digital? Like, it doesn't well, really I guess cool. because there's that there's that idea of like I have a game that people you who can't will get. put it off, put it off buying it. They're like, well, I already bought, I played Mario sixty four way back. I don't need to buy it. And then they put it off. Oh, whatever. I could just get it digitally later. Mm-hmm. But if you if you cut that off, then that yeah. so like that, that uh-huh urgency moment. is there. So basically, yeah, that there, you can. So so what you're saying is, I could take my switch, go out to my kids when they get like new switches later this year, and be like, ha ha, you can't play this game. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, yeah. exactly like that too. <laughs> exactly like that's exactly what Nintendo yeah. intended. <laughs> no, I, I the good just, the good part of all this is the memes about with the memes with Sephiroth stabbing Mario. Oh god, the memes are great. <laughs> Nintendo. Uh, yeah. Mar- oh, the, me- the memes are classic. Yeah. The memes are classic. Great memes. Uh mm-hmm. so yeah. Okay, so they're doing it. There's nothing we can do about it. Um the question is, do you, do you like? Do you guys like what they did for the 35th anniversary of Mario? It, keep in mind, they have celebrated like the 25th before and 20th, just like they did with Zelda. But it, mm-hmm. do you even remember what they did for the 25th and 20th for Mario? Does anybody? They had an All Stars pack for the 25th, didn't they? On the Wii. Sure. But it was just the Super Nintendo Super Mario All Stars. Yep, same thing that they did this time around the too. Movie. They did that Basically, on the online yeah. service this, this time. But like, right? They didn't go all out like this. They they mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. went all out and somehow did it without a brand new mainline Mario game. Yeah, but I think they got crazy. away with it because right. Bowser's Fury. Have you guys checked that game out yet? Oh, I beat it twice. That, 100%. It's great. It's so good. <laughs> I, I don't think Eric's tried it yet. I'm telling you right now, Bowser's Fury, which is... What are you talking mm-hmm. about? You, you have Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury? No. Oh, yeah. I know you played it on okay. stream, yeah. but I mean, I have you played it, played it pa- uh, no. since then? Okay. But so, still, it's, so it was really, really to, good when I played it. You need to play it. Yeah, it was really, really good when I played it. And tell me if you think that's what the future of the Mario series should be. Because it was insanely incredible, especially right up to mm-hmm. the end. It had a really great ending. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it for people who haven't got there yet. It, it I feel like that it, it, kind of vindicated the we didn't the, release a new mainline Mario mm-hmm. game, but hey, we gave you this, which is kind of teasing you for what a new mainline so Mario kind of, game 
Are you talking Could kind be. of the open so, world? You can go wherever you yeah. want, get whatever star star yeah. you want. Type. Oh yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. The freedom. It's, it's the perfect yeah. marriage of Odyssey and 3D worlds, in in my view. But th- there's know. actually some uh, theories that um, the Bowser Sphere expansion was originally DLC for Mario Odyssey that mm-hmm. they retooled so that they could resell 3D World and tack that on at full price. Um, yeah. And I mean, not a bad. I can name. see that because the progression, the the way you collect the shines, it all does feel very Odyssey but in 3d world with the power-ups and everything but like they pretty much all the challenges that you need power-ups for in that you could have had an enemy in odyssey that you capture and and use for those in theory right so um i don't know there, there's a theory that they might have retooled that and, and i'm like oh it makes some sense but they even added the dive from odyssey into 3d world to add to bowser's fury so because that wasn't think, in the original game. So, like, you, you talked about Mary, Mario, Odyssey, and uh, 3D World totally. together. I don't know that it... Totally. You've got the, the open sandbox world yeah. of Odyssey, uh, but you've got 3D World's controls and power-ups and Plessy and all that good stuff. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. it, it definitely just feels like the perfect the perfect mesh of those two. Sure. I know. I, I can see that. Um, I... S- well... <sighs> And, and Odyssey had, like, a whole world themed after Super Mario 64, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's to say they didn't have planned other themed worlds after other games, including they could have had a, a 3D world-themed world that yeah, was this. And that they, was they, this. They You're right. You're not. retooled it to fit in here. Oh, totally. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. Um, I, I do – I, I kind of want to see Bowser's Fury become a full game someday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe that was the thing. We wanted to test it, see how it was received. If people like it, let's go this way. Because mm-hmm. Mario Odyssey really w- like w- was like open world, but still not. The levels were still, still self-contained. Off. Yeah. This is full um, open world. Which, by the way, if I remember is right. exactly like what, what 3D mm-hmm. world's like. They're all self-contained levels. You can go anywhere you want within the level, but they're self-contained. True. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way they're designed yeah, the is way they're designed, yeah. very linear, whereas yeah. Odyssey is very sandbox oh yeah oh yeah so Mm -hmm. it it, it was just an interesting thing to see them do it uh the way they did um so if if anything i feel like the the 35th anniversary of mario uh was done i i guess about as well as they could do without having a new mainline game i mean if you think about it as starting with the release of paper mario ending Mm -hmm. with i guess the the content in animal crossing um it, it it feels like you know in between there they did they did so much i mean we got ar uh mario kart for crying out loud that doesn't get enough pub like that <laughs> it, it's incredible maybe it's because people are stuck inside so like everyone's waiting to make all these courses with their friends and they can't right now uh, but like dude that it, it works incredibly well uh mm-hmm. and you expand that into all, all the other stuff they, they've released from the hardware and obviously you know there's some things people aren't happy about like the handling of the pin sets and how hard it was to get those i i mean they did a good job i don't know what else to say other than i'm disappointed mostly in 3d all-stars going away yeah what they did is working so i mean i mean it's working for nintendo (laughs) right no that's what i'm saying i'm not saying customers i'm saying nintendo but we should be worried about the customers more so than nintendo shouldn't we not like we work for them. Nintendo no, I, doesn't give me no, the fat, I know. The fat Nintendo check. Nintendo has money. I know. I know. <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> has my <laughs> money. That's the problem. But as a business, that's what you. That's what all businesses think about is, how do I make money? And they're making the correct decisions, I'm guessing, just based on them making money. They, may, they do make a lot so. of money. Um, all right, so... <sighs> I, I know this next topic is going to end up diving a bit into Switch Pro, but uh, because the article is itself, but Bloomberg put up a new article um, about Switch because a bunch of analysts feel like Switch peaked in this last fiscal year um, and it is now on the downswing, which probably coincides with the fact that PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X keep selling out and clearly are popular. Um, and the thought process that they're going to have a bunch of major games coming out. Nintendo doesn't necessarily have any massive software currently announced for this year. Splatoon 3 isn't, you know, potentially a year or more away. Uh, and the biggest game is what? Mario Golf? Super Rush? If you don't care about, you know, a, a Wii HD port. So, yeah, you could talk about new Pokemon Snap. 
Most people don't feel like that's going to do incredibly well. I think it's going to sell incredibly well, but some analysts don't think it's going to. And then, yeah, we have Brilliant Diamond and uh, Brilliant Pearl probably this holiday, but again, lukewarm reception mm-hmm. to that as well. So Nintendo doesn't seem to have like the big, exciting hitters announced yet. So analysts are like, look, everything else is coming. The other systems are about to have their big games land. Sounds like Starfield for Xbox is being announced this summer as a big holiday game. Halo Infinite's going to be coming. PlayStation's starting to get their lineup ramped up. And Nintendo's just kind of sitting here like, hey, we got Skyward Sword HD. We got Mario Golf. Are you good? (laughs) So analysts are like, man, Nintendo's on the downswing now. But not so fast, according to Takahashi Machizuki at Bloomberg. He has said and noted that Nintendo has ordered 250 million physical Switch cartridges. Good lord. That would be an all-time physical sales record for Nintendo in a single year. This is even before the, the age of digital sales. That is nuts. Now, granted, all those don't have to be necessarily for this year. It could be for 2022. But the point is, they have never had an order this big before. They're so all they going to the same game. Yeah. <laughs> 250 million. Yeah. 250 million ordered. And obviously, Takahashi Makshizuki is on the train that, hey, my sources are saying new Switch hardware is coming this year as well. That'll boost things this holiday. Okay. So, mm-hmm. like, do we think Nintendo Switch, entering the midway point, according to Furukawa, is actually starting to go maybe maybe it's plateaued now and we're going to hit the downswing. Maybe the plateau was Animal Crossing and now we're we're, we're going to start sinking down because the thought process I suppose in for most analysts mm. is Nintendo systems typically peak in like years 2 and 3. The peak for Switch took a little bit longer and maybe it maybe theoretically it would have peaked in 2019 but then the pandemic happened which boosted all system sales for everyone. So the pandemic mm. added that extra peak do do we think that regardless of what Nintendo has to announce, which we know Breath of the Wild 2 is in the works, we know Metro Prime 4, Splatoon 3, those three we know for sure, plus Bayonetta, which isn't really that big of a sell. Mm-hmm. Actually, Metroid isn't technically that big of a seller traditionally either. So, like, yes, Nintendo uh-huh. likely has some big sellers in the pipeline, a Mario Kart 9 at some point. There's Mario, Mario Odyssey Kart 2. Game, right? Mario Odyssey 2. Uh, obviously, we know about Breath of the Wild 2. There, there's there's got to you know, we're not going to get another <laughs> Smash Bros. this gen. <laughs> But because they're gonna milk Smash Bros like crazy, guys. Oh, yeah. Next platform Nintendo brings out, Ultimate's just gonna get ported with all the DLC for sixty bucks. You mean like Mario uh, Kart? 8 well, plus right I think Smash Ultimate. There's an interesting conversation oh. we'll have someday where I, I don't think Sakurai would would allow that. I think he would be the one to be no, because people said that Ultimate was just Smash for Wii U ported with DLC and which extra it totally stuff wasn't. Totally it was totally not not at all the same game it's just but i, I it's feel just like because oh the Sakurai characters are hd with like down. similar character yeah. models it's like well yeah we already hd the yeah, character but, models we don't have yeah. to replace the entire character <laughs> right. every game right are you dumb oh god that would link be... looks like link and mario yeah. looks like mario who the hell knew right yeah <laughs> it's yeah as soon as you like i feel like as soon as you boot up that game and, and hold a controller you can feel it's a completely different completely mm-hmm. different game but yeah. um but i don't know i almost feel like sakurai would would be like now we're gonna go all in, all in on this again and all in and build it from the ground up and because <laughs> he's a mad lad like that so he, he works himself to death so. so do we think switch is on the downswing i mean do we ha- have we hit the peak years and now are we kind of in the slow downturn where sales are just going to kind of slowly get worse year and year or as for akawa has said in the past fall off a cliff which he's trying to avoid the cliff fall. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to fall, even if it's not a cliff. Go ahead. I don't... People and analysts always seem to assume doom and gloom for Nintendo, but Nintendo is doomed, and <laughs> that's and never the case. <laughs> I mean... And only for kids. Yeah, to even be though... fair, come on. we got to be fair. Time. 3DS hmm. was the worst selling handheld of all time for them. Wii U is the worst selling home console. Yeah, Again, true. this is if we don't call yeah. Virtual Boy, which this is true. <laughs> which people are like, oh, is that a handheld or is that a home console? I'm like, well, it's Nintendo well, calls it's... it as a handheld, but it was like neither. It was a tabletop system, like one of the only mm-hmm. tabletop systems in existence, and it sucked. So here's the thing. It was Nintendo had a, had a couple of years there where they lost money for the first time since becoming a video game company. 
Uh, sure. For two straight years, they had net losses, which had never happened in the history of the company. And at that point, I get it. The doom and gloom should be out. Nintendo sure. isn't doing well. But, like, Nintendo is doing well now. And I guess mm-hmm. everyone wants to be that savvy person that predicts, yeah, Nintendo's doing well, but when is that cliff coming? I want to be the one that predicted when that cliff is coming. Mm-hmm. And I keep thinking, look, I don't think they're in trouble this first half of the year. Um, I, I think with the other systems not being easy to grab with the pandemic still technically going on into the summer mm-hmm. and uh, with enough solid releases coming out, you know, I, I'd say new Pokemon mm-hmm. snap. Uh, I'd say obviously Monster Hunter rise is more than a solid release uh, coming th- coming this month, like really soon guys, uh, whether it's big in the West, I don't know, but it's going to be massive in Japan. Uh, mm-hmm. And then obviously I think Skyward Sword HG is going to end up, selling incredibly well and it's going to outsell the original release quite easily i think so definitely i think that's a solid first half of the year but it's not you know you don't have like that 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 must have game somewhere in there right unless you're a big monster hunter fan Mm -hmm. there isn't that must have game uh which by the way i'm i'm super i mean to me it's mario golf yeah that's my must-have game right now. <laughs> but that's because they added an RPG mode that I'm praying they don't mess up. Knowing Nintendo's history with sports games, it's going to be messed up. But It's it's Wario's fashion. That's I'm, ho- really- I'm hoping... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's... <laughs> Wario. Wario's why I'm buying that game. Um, <laughs> I love Wario. Mm-hmm. So, I, I... I think we just need to be patient. I think if Nintendo really did order 250 God, million cartridges, that's not, and that's in ad- that's in addition mm-hmm. to what they expect to sell digitally, then they clearly right. have major games landing. They just haven't talked about yet. Because I feel like people are forgetting that Nintendo under Furukawa seems to have changed their strategy. See, they used to announce games way early, way early, and technically they just did with Splatoon three. But True. lately, a majority of their games, Paper Mario, what'd they give us? Two-month run-up. Mm-hmm. Announce, release. Mm-hmm. What'd, they, what'd they do for Age yeah. of Calamity? One-month run-up. Announce, yeah. release, mm-hmm. done. Sold four million copies. It's like, clearly, they're doing these shorter run-ups. Mario 35th Anniversary, they were planning to do that at E3, but it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So there was a short run-up. But I feel like that. they do that. So with games, I feel like with games that they know are just going to sell they have no hesitation about announcing it. So Splatoon, like Splatoon is huge, especially oh, yeah. in Japan. Um, so they know Splatoon 3 is going to sell. They're, they're, so they've well, got no like problem announcing Breath of the Wild it. Since because two since 20 Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And so for the sequel to Breath of the Wild, it's going to sell. It's going to sell really well. So they have no hesitation about announcing it early because no matter how early they announce it, it's going to sell. Whereas these other games where I almost feel like if they're unsure about how well it's going to do, they're going to hold off to the last minute and then when they announce it and it's fresh on people's mind, it's still it's still fresh and top of mind by the time it comes out because they like only barely just I'll, announced I'll, it. I'll say this. I, were they really yeah. hesitant about Age of Calamity? Age of Calamities, I feel like maybe because Hyrule Warriors was kind of like the first Hyrule Warriors game was kind of received lukewarm. You know, there was a lot of hype up to it and then it came out. It was a little lukewarm. Um so I almost feel like they were hesitant because of that, but um, it obviously did end up selling really well. It's a great game. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. That that one is a bit of an outlier, but a lot of the other games like that have traditionally um, just sold super well are always the ones that they seem to be quite out the gate with years even in advance. So. Uh, lately at least so i don't know i could be totally off off the ball off well, the marker and then again <laughs> so. then then again an unannounced game can never be delayed that's also true because <laughs> so. if, if the public doesn't in, uh, externally delayed internally yes but if because if the public never knows about it there if it's delayed a year it doesn't matter but you could say that about even a game I, as long as they don't put it at release date because yeah, i've had people well, right. Um, like people are like, oh, Breath know, of the Wild is delayed in 2022. I'm like, yeah. Breath of the Wild hasn't had an, a release date. What yeah. are you talking about? It, it was delayed? never... We have no idea you what You can't delay intended. a game unless they say when it's going to come out. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's like, oh, yeah. but they announced it. I'm like, sure, but technically they didn't even say it was for Switch when they announced it. They just announced it. It said Breath of the Wild sequel is now in development. That's it. Mm-hmm. They didn't say development for Switch. 
Literally, it could be not coming out for three, four years. Who do I mean? It should. Yeah. But I mm-hmm. don't know. Like, so I, I, I think that's a, a key thing that I think there's some interesting marketing strategies going on. So Sony has always done that. We're going to tell you everything like five years in advance. Mm-hmm. And our games will come when they're ready. And it seems to work for them. Their systems keep selling, you know, over a hundred million and, and, and their games have been increasing in sales. PlayStation four, their games finally started selling like Nintendo games sell, which is, you know, 10, 20 million. That's, that's really good. Um, so their strategy clearly has been paying off. Obviously, we you know Xbox's strategy is now all about game pass. Um, even when they <laughs> talked about their recent acquisition and about Bethesda, the, the, the sit down round table and Phil Spencer's like, Hey, just telling you right now, we bought this, these people to put these games on Game Pass. Period. Exclusively mm-hmm. on Game yep. Pass. Done. Because they're pushing Game Pass. They want it to be like Netflix. And I know someone, there's that one commenter out there that's going to tell me, oh, Netflix hasn't made money in 10 years. <laughs> You're right. And guess what? They are now projected to make profits starting this year and every year moving forward. Why didn't they make profits the last 10 years? Because they invested in themselves and got away from other people's content and invested in creating their own. Yeah. So now all the all the billions mm-hmm. of dollars that have been invested by all their investors are going to pay off. Yeah. Same thing with Spotify. Didn't make all this money all this time. Just last year turned massive profits and is already way in the green this year too. These streaming services that M- Microsoft is going down now with xCloud and Game Pass it's not about profits now. It's a decade. It's a decade long process to dominance. That's their strategy. Sony and Nintendo seem to have a similar strategy <laughs> in the moment. In that we're going to just keep mm-hmm. releasing a bunch of exclusive games for sixty, or in PlayStation 5's case, seventy dollars, um, and we're just going to keep banging that traditional drum until nobody wants to support that traditional drum anymore. Um, so for Nintendo. When I, when I look at the Switch, I don't think... I think the Switch sales could be flat this year. I think looking at last year, considering their entire fiscal year, you know, which we don't have the final results for yet, guys, because it's not over yet. This is the last... We're in the last month of Nintendo's financial fiscal year, so we don't have final sales. We're not going to have them till April 6th or something? Or is it May 6th? I can't remember. They, they announced already when they were going to do it, but... Um, so... I'm, I'm assuming we're going to see Nintendo projected 24 million. I think it probably exceeded that, and it's probably a 26 million or so sales. Um, so, like, I think they could just do that again. If you think about it, they did it last year, and the biggest game was Animal Crossing, which is a huge game, but it mm-hmm. came out like before the start of the fiscal year. So, I think Nintendo has something. They have, they have probably at least two major games in the second half of the year, and they know it. Now, to need 250 million, you know, so- software cartridges, I don't know what they need those for. That has me thinking it's something they feel like is going to sell 15, 20 million plus easy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they probably think Pokemon's a for sure 10 million. But besides that, I'm like, well, what games could they have that could sell 15, 20 million plus? It'd be another Mario Kart game. I know some people think, oh, they won't do it. 8 Deluxe. I'm like, why? So 8 Deluxe, congratulations. 8 Deluxe is moving 800,000 units a quarter. What sounds better? 800,000 units a quarter or let me get 20 million in a quarter? Yeah. And then that game yeah. is going to continue to sell multiple millions every quarter. Like, yeah. like oh, they, they're not going to release Mario Kart 9 because Mario Kart 8, okay, and Mario Kart 9 is going to sell even better every month. So why wouldn't they? Like, it's, it, it's yeah, dumb. They'll sure. be leaving money on the table. And because it comes out so late in the life cycle, guess what? It's going to be a day one port to their next-gen platform. Mario Kart 9. I, I just feel like Deluxe. I don't understand the Deluxe. logic of this game sold super well, so they won't release the sequel to that game. because well, it keeps selling that, well. Yeah. That, uh, I, yeah, but even still, even even if it's still selling well. Like, the only like game, you said. The only game I Because even the people who are, like like me, who are wish-washy on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I still haven't bought the game. Mm-hmm. But it's always that one that's always kind of like, ah, I'm always, I always feel like I'm on the cusp of buying it. Yeah. But if they... So so people like me, who are wishy-washy, 9 comes out, I'll be like, yeah, I'll buy it right sure. away. Sure, yeah, it's new. Yeah, the yeah. reason I'm wishy-washy about 8 is, oh, I bought the first, I bought the original. <laughs> and you know, the I need a Deluxe. Wait, and when I, is yeah, this shoe going to drop for 9? What, it's Zelda in the deal, so, so come on now. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It's um, so I feel like that would be the push to, okay, now I'll go buy Mario Kart. And everyone who's already bought eight deluxe is going to jump to Mario. Oh, he's going to nine. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the only game they have where you could argue a sequel is tough in the same gen. Well, smash bros. It just takes too long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and now I don't know after ultimate, I don't know how you follow up ultimate at all because any reduction in characters for a new oh, game is going to be there's going to be bloody gonna be murder backlash galore. And so mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like they're going to milk ultimate a whole nother gen. I think they're going to ultimate deluxe it for a gen and just not just leave it on the back burner for a decade plus. They'll keep adding stages and characters to it. Yeah, maybe they'll even do a new fighter pass for it. <laughs> yeah. Next gen or something. I don't know. Future of Switch and if it's going to survive. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's going to do just fine. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. the concept is is novel and yeah no for sure i i think right now we're just kind of in a in a in a downturn uh like kind of a camel pump i i see it coming back up here you know the pandemic i think hurt a little bit name it kind of messed with their plans i'm guessing Um, but did it i it it benefited them in a lot of ways to a certain extent yeah um let me just put it this way switch sold out during its fourth year on the market and you couldn't find it in the stores and it wasn't because they stopped making it. Like, yeah, they, they had a slowdown in manufacturing, but they're still almost sold 30 million in its fourth year. And they've never had a platform come out and peak during the fourth year. Right. Hmm. So clearly the pandemic helped but, them. It didn't hurt them. I'm talking games wise. Sure. I, you know, sure. kind of the low wall in games. I think the pandemic possibly screwed with their we don't know because we're never going to know if Breath of the Wild 2 has been Now let delayed. me put on my player essence hat not, and tell yeah. you about how. Hey, guess what? Switch actually didn't have a lull in games in 2020 and actually released just as many games as they did the year <laughs> before. I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm going to say factually there was plenty of new games and plenty of ports as well. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm yeah. not saying that, like, yeah, I say Animal Crossing, but think about it. They ended the year with, strong with a new game. Okay, so... We technically got a new Mario Okay, yes, the number year. of games may have been Paper the same, Mario. but the quality of games, the major hitters... So you're saying that, that Mario Kart Home Circuit is not a quality hitter for you? <laughs> Age of Calamity is not tickling that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Age of Calamity doing Animal Crossing is just garbage? Well, I I'm, wasn't much of an Animal Crossing fan to begin with, so there's that... I mean, oh, here we go. I know. Here we go. What, what gonna blow- Paper Mario is just dog Chance shit gonna- now. Just might as well just throw that hey. in the garbage. It doesn't matter. No, but but Eric has a point because the like you look at the Switch's launch year, you have Zelda, Breath of the Wild, huge Mario Odyssey, Splatoon. That that's a crazy launch year just to have just those three as opposed and you know there's all the other little titles here and there, but that that launch year that's that's a great lineup. And um, it's almost hard to like live up to that after well, so twenty twenty. But, but Nintendo did that intentionally because we you tanked. So oh, for said, sure. Look, yeah, we don't know if Switch is going to be successful. But we're going to give it everything we have and pray it works. For sure, for sure. But um, I can see a lot of people being kind of not that they're right about it, but I can understand the perspective of well, saying here, that it's I, not as what, good a year. Here's so. what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Look Mm -hmm. at what happened in 2017. Then look at what happened in 2018. It felt like kind of a down year in comparison, right? Then Mm -hmm. we got to 2019. Boy, they blew us the hell out in 2019. Astral Chain, Damon X Machina, uh, Luigi's Match at 3, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, I'm forgetting a couple, too, in there. They they had, like, two or three other Starlink. Starlink. Well, I mean, that was a Nintendo, but... I think that came out in 2018, actually. At the end of 2018, maybe Possible, it was 2019. Um, it was in that same same uh, E3 but, as the other ones. But I I, I think so, that I think um, no Starlink was at E3 2018. Was it okay? Yeah, that was the first time we went to Nintendo. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't at the last one. The last one member was Pokemon. Yeah. Sword no. I, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then yeah. they had Link's the Awakening. Big Luigi's Mansion. God, I'm losing. I'm losing track of my years and which ones we've. We haven't been to that. Many. No, I know. Uh, how but old it's just, are you, Eric? <laughs> I, Dude, my memory is terrible. You know what? Yeah. It's time for you to retire from the podcast. You can't even remember what we've done. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been three times. One was all Zelda, so that's oh, yeah. easy to remember. Well, right. Nothing but yeah. Zelda. But the other two years, like they're very distinct at what we did those years. Sure. I could tell you every game I touched at every E3. I've oh, been there you to. go. 
I don't have that. I I just don't have. Just let you know, how, to, guys. It's official. Eric hasn't been a gamer in twenty years. <laughs> oh no. That's right. I'm I'm kicking you back to like mid teens. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. Sure. Fourteen. Sure. Before I you guess. became all about your band and your friends and stop sure. stop having our all night game sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I haven't yep. been a gamer since then. He hasn't yeah. been a gamer since then. It's just official. Like, yeah. all, all you guys watch are like, man, I would remember everything I do at E3. And Eric's like, he, add like he's some industry veteran that's been the 30 of them. Yeah. I've, I've had so many no. great memories. I can't even recall them all. That's just it, how it goes. It's also been how, a couple years, and I <laughs> just don't keep that part of things in my memory. Yes, but I yeah, remember, you remember playing games. You remember Fat Tomato Pizza. Oh, damn straight. <laughs> so, see, <laughs> see where his priorities are? The food we eat while we're there. Have you seen me? Mm. Yeah, but that suggests that you're a gamer that lives in his parents' basement. Well, second floor, but y- y- <laughs> y- yeah. <laughs> you're on the same level. You're yeah. all good. Same yeah. level. Yeah. I'm not in the basement. <laughs> no, that there was when go. we were kids. Yeah. We yeah. gamed in the basement. Yeah, yeah, we did. Both houses. Yeah, we did. Um, but no, I... Uh, <laughs> Not enough teasing. Let, let, let's get into the last topic. Um, Zelda's 35th anniversary. Now, we did a whole podcast on this a bit ago, mm-hmm. but I know that Captain Bergeson happens to be a pretty big Zelda guy over there. I know. I do the Zelda videos. Because, I yeah. mean, he does Zelda videos. Um, hello, Dragon mm-hmm. Break. You guys seen that video on my channel? That was him. That, that, was, all, that, that was all him. Way back in the Zelda Informer days. Uh, in fact, Zelda Informer is how I met him. So... Mm-hmm. What do you realistically, not wishful thinking, realistically right. think that Nintendo is going to do for Zelda's 35th anniversary? Keep it in mind that it seemingly mm-hmm. seems like in the past, for the 20th and 25th, they did more than they did for the Mario anniversary for some ungodly True. reason. I think it's because Zelda fans just buy up merch so they, they know they can do. You know, like like everyone loves Mario. Mario sells. It appeals to everybody. But Mario's Zelda fans have a... Are, are, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, that's, whoa. That's nuts. Those are fighters. I love Mario. That's the place to meet the <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you're not wrong considering that if uh, if I remember correctly... Hey, in he the, a plumber. In the original Mario, mm-hmm. Mario uh, Super Mario Brothers, yeah. that all those blocks were technically toads. Were they? That, if I remember oh, right, Mario. in the lore. Oh, boy. So whenever you were breaking I, blocks, see, I'm now, pretty sure you were on this. He just redeemed his gamer <laughs> card. All right, I don't know. There I don't know go. that little nugget of history. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. almost positive. He's pulling. He's got a did you know gaming hat. Well, on actually, here. actually, also too. It, if I remember correctly as well, in the pamphlet for the original Mario two, it says Mario is our hero, and in parentheses maybe. So maybe because it. Maybe they just meant Luigi. I could be wrong. Eric, Eric is <laughs> desperately. <laughs> someone better fact check him because I'm not going to bother I'm, I'm to do it. I'm guaranteeing. Someone, someone I'm better fact check him because he's trying comments. to redeem his gamer card right now. And he might have just did it masterfully. <laughs> it just proved to me he's might a Mario have. savant and I'm just yes. an idiot. All right. Bitch. I am an idiot. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Back to Zelda. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Right, what, 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 are your, what do you think right. they're going to do? Well, try, trying to temper my expectations, of course. But I feel, first of all, Uh, I don't think they're going to announce anything until Skyward Sword HD has had a chance to sell. Because if they came out the gate and they're like, oh, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming or or any other announcement that's hype as heck, it will completely overshadow and undermine Skyward Sword's um, divisive already existence. Uh, And so, which, by the way, it's a great game. Definitely go give it a chance, guys. It's great. And it's going to be great on Switch. I just did a video uh, about why you guys should play it. Go play it. ah, It's awesome. There you go. Go watch watch Nate's videos. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I I feel like they're... They know Skyward Sword sold pretty poorly on the Wii. They know it's divisive among the community. So they're going to want to keep, um, you know, the spotlight on that to make sure that it sells properly. And then I think after the end of summer maybe september around that time late august early september they're going to come out we're going to have a proper direct i hope um I, re- I really think they will and i think that it'll be fairly comparable to the mario 35 stuff they're going to probably have it release games up until like the end of the first quarter of 2022 um what those games are i couldn't say for sure i don't think it's going to be the sequel to breath of the wild I don't think that game is coming out until probably late 2022, but I think we could see some other ports 
or uh, collections or something like that. So Boo. Um, I, 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 that's my unpopular opinion. All right, time to turn that. the TV off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this podcast no, really, is never getting posted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No, I really don't think Breath of the Wild is coming out um, this year because no, I, I feel like if it were, but what we'd about be hearing the end about of March it. 31st? Um, they ran, they ran maybe. Mario through the 31st. Yeah. So I could see it coming out for for March around the time Breath of the Wild turns five. Then, you know, Breath of the Wild's off to kindergarten and <laughs> its sequel comes along. <laughs> so. Yeah. But um, so I'm just trying, I can, to, I'm I trying to keep the that. hope alive. Try to keep the yeah. hope alive. Well, yeah, I, I think more realistically, uh, we're looking probably the later end of of uh, of 2022. Um, not to be pessimistic, but I, I just think that um, we'd be hearing more about it if it were coming sooner. Um, I because it's not like. Uh, and, and true, I know the marketing strategy lately has been no, that they've and not, not the marketing the strategy, cast, but... because they already announced the game. They just have to tell yes. us when it's going to come and it's going to sell. Right. I mean, think. But I, I, I look at it like, like they this. Announce it anytime. Oh, think about it like this. Think about it like this. Hey, I'm gonna use mm-hmm. I'm gonna use Breath of the Wild as an example because they announced that at E3 okay. 2014, showed it a little bit at mm-hmm. the Game Awards, and then boom, didn't see it again until they announced it's gonna come. We to got a new platform. 11 right? second teaser f- <laughs> for it the next year <laughs> yeah. when they were showing Twilight Princess HD, and then they sure. said, "Don't forget, Don't the forget. next Zelda game is coming out only for Wii U." Yep. This <laughs> year. <laughs> they, oh. they yeah, I remember Woo! that. That, oh. that was bad. That was bad. Um, An but but put it this way: that when they announced it was, mm-hmm. you know, quote unquote delayed, mm-hmm. we didn't see it again until E3 2016. And right. the only reason it didn't go from E3 to holiday release is because the Switch didn't release yet. Right. The game would have came out if the Switch would have released that holiday. But for some reason, mm-hmm. and I, I think the reason was to line up their game releases because it wasn't that it wasn't that Mario and Zelda weren't ready. It's that they wanted to make sure the in between games were gonna land. They, they basically were mm-hmm. like, dude, nine months. We need something major every other month. Period. End of story. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know right. if Switch is gonna be successful. We so we want to we want to hit it with Splatoon. We want to hit it mm-hmm. at the right time with these releases. Um, so clearly, I think Switch was just pushed out to to March just because they needed. They, they needed time to line everything up. But if Switch had released a holiday, there's no doubt that, yeah, so what of Breath of the Wild? So, like, right. I look at it as, okay, let's say Nintendo chooses to participate in E3, which, by the way, guys, uh, I know E3 is canceled, quote-unquote, but they are planning a digital event, and Microsoft has now confirmed they are partaking in that digital event, which means the E3 oh, digital okay. event is going to happen. So if Microsoft's there, then then (laughs) There Nintendo is likely going to be there as well. And if Nintendo's there, they could show off the game there and release it this holiday, which is probably what would have happened originally with Breath of the Wild. Now, that's my speculation, because we don't know that Nintendo's there. Obviously, Microsoft could decide to back out. I think they want to be there because they have a lot of big announcements from Bethesda they want to show off. Yeah. Um, so they mm-hmm. want to get as big an audience as they can, and they know that an E3 audience, even just online only, will draw in a bigger crowd than just their own Xbox channels. Um, mm-hmm. So, and Microsoft's fully invested in the future, not necessarily making money now, because I think I think the only thing working against the ESA and E3 is they're charging the same amount of money to be on these live streams as they do if you had a booth. No, oh, Jesus. Of course. But this isn't a physical booth, and these places like Nintendo can just do their own directs on their own channels and don't need you. Yeah. Digitally. Mm-hmm. That it feels like a poor And like here's the thing. In the past <laughs> decision. Think about it in the past mm-hmm. too. All the press conferences that have happened over the past, ESA doesn't mm-hmm. charge you a fee to have those press conferences. You pay the venues where you're holding those press conferences at. You don't pay the ESA. You pay the ESA for for showtime or for sh- for show floor space. The ESA, yeah. technically, the press conferences were never ran by E3. I know. That's yeah. All. Okay. Yeah. So I I think that there's a situation arising at the moment where we need to be careful um, in thinking or I guess I asked your opinion and I appreciate your opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Of course, and I could be wrong. Well, I, think none I of would us love know. to be yeah, wrong right. and none it comes sooner. Right? None of us so, know. And, yeah, yeah. And none of us know. You might not even come in twenty twenty two. And you're yeah, not alone in your opinion either. I oh, mean, there's not. plenty of people oh. out there that are thinking it's definitely oh, it's just not going to be like all the people year. that tell me Switch Pro isn't real. They might be right. That, yeah. I have no wow. idea. I'm not Nintendo. You know? We do know Breath of the Wild 2 exists. Mm-hmm. Because they keep reminding us it exists. At some point, they got to show... I mean, they said we're going to see it this year. So at least have that to we, look we or, know what Wait, wait, wait. It didn't say see it. Let's clarify. There will be info. news. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. The news could be it's coming next year and we have nothing for you but a title. I don't. Cool. I mean, I, I would it's hope better than no news. I would hope there'd be more, but <laughs> well, I would hope it would be a trailer. I think I don't. We're gonna think... get another eleven second tease. <laughs> <laughs> they have to have more. Like, my my thought is this: I don't think I. I personally mm. think Breath of the Wild Two is already done, and I think it's been done. Mm. I think they're polishing it absolutely and improving performance and all that jazz. But it uses the same engine. It uses the same art direction. Mm-hmm. They don't need five years, even with a pandemic, to turn around a new game. True. They just don't. This isn't. They're taking as much time from release as it took to get a brand new engine built for Breath of the Wild. They don't need that much time to do this. So, and not just the engine, which caused delays for Breath of the Wild, but sure. they are. I think Aonuma said that they are basically setting it in the same overworld as well. Yeah. So most of the physical map is built And Yeah, they're going to do differences and changes so, and make it worth exploring yeah, again. Yeah, they'll tweak things. But yeah. my thing is, clearly, they don't need six years to put together this game. And that's what it would be entering into next year towards the holidays. So I look at this as, you know, mm-hmm. even with the pandemic, let's say it just toss out a year of development. Yeah. That's still three years of development. I I can't imagine that they don't have something not only ready to show, but I think they're just waiting for the right time to release it. And I think what they saw was the original plan, and I think this was the plan before last year mm-hmm. happened, before the pandemic happened. They always knew they were blowing out the 35th anniversary of Mario. They were going to do it at mm-hmm. E3. They didn't just plan that overnight. Mm-hmm. They knew that in 2019 that they were going to do this. Okay, So they knew... We're not going to release it during Mario's year. We're going to let Mario have it slightly. So maybe there's a Mario game that got pushed out of it. Maybe Mario Golf was supposed to be part of it at some point, and that got pushed out. Um, but whatever. They probably were always thinking, look, that's fine. 35th anniversary. Mm-hmm. Let's target it for Zelda, and let's have it come out then. Let's make Zelda the focus that year and actually have a brand new game come out during that timetable because i i'm not saying that it's been done since 2019 folks but i'm saying oh, i think it's been pretty yeah. damn far along yeah. i think when we saw that initial trailer in 2019 that wasn't just like a tease of a concept of an idea like breath of the wild was in 2014 which by the way when we saw breath of the wild again later that year when they showed actual gameplay they had an overworld they had the towers they had the mm-hmm. sheikah slate they clearly Ha- I mean, it wasn't called. We didn't know it was called the Sheikah, so we didn't know that's what they were using because they were using the, the Wii U gamepad. But we, they, they clearly were much further along in development at that time than just that little teaser at E3. And I think that's mm-hmm. true here. I think they're way far in development here. And I don't know if you care about what Game Over Jesse has to say, but it sounds like some voice acting recordings could be coming up. That usually happens towards the end. We'll see. He's not willing to confirm or deny because, obviously, he's not supposed to know anything <laughs> if he does know anything. Yeah. But I'm just throwing out there that, like, if they're thinking about recording sometime, like, this summer or this or this spring, I don't know. It feels like... Yeah. It, I don't know. It, suspiciously, I'll just say this. Suspiciously, the voice actors mm-hmm. from the prior Zelda games have stopped appearing on podcasts. Not mm-hmm. just you guys, it's in general. Because they were appearing on, they've been, appearing, they've been on podcasts consistently, multiple of them for like the last three, four years, mm-hmm. and now they just stopped. And why would they need to stop? Maybe because they know some shit they can't talk about, and it's hard, too hard to have them speak publicly and trust something well, isn't going to slip. They're up. good at they're good at not talking. Oh, yeah, they like, are. When we, they are. Our podcast we had um, Sean Chiplock, the voice of Rivali yep. and the Great Decker Tree. Yep, and it was like. Only a couple weeks before Age of Calamity was Age announced. Of Calamity, yep, yep. 
And we asked him all these questions and just never a peep about it. Well, you know, anything. I mean, like he, oh, he yeah. likes his job. Probably NDA yeah. success. He doesn't want to lose his job, job too. But like, I'm I sure felt so silly for scheduling. Based, <laughs> based on how Nintendo, based on how Nintendo handles their, uh, mm. like uh, how how they pay their employees, I'm guessing that a voice acting job at Nintendo is probably a pretty sweet gig. Wouldn't want to blow. Mm. The fact that hey, you're the voice of some major characters in Zelda. I want to be that voice. So I want to be the Charles Matinee and be voicing this thing for 20 years. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. like Charles Matinee is talking everywhere and never says a peep about anything, and he knows what mm-hmm. he's been working on. <laughs> well, I mean, when your lines are yah, right. wah, and well, woohoo, yeah, I mean, maybe you don't. Uh, yeah, yeah the, the, every well, now and then he's got some new yeah, lines. Yeah, he yeah. Does, he said he he said it on at a con I think two years ago that he does still record new lines for games. So like, yeah, there I mean, are new. Uh, maybe it's just because they don't want it to seem like it's the same Wahoo they've been using for twenty years. I mean, yeah, you know, but it's got to have a, a I, little bit of difference. Mario has to age a little bit. No, no, don't worry, I, I, Plus I, I he's the voice of a lot of other Mario characters. No, no, I know, no. So I, I don't, I didn't go Wahoo. I went Wahoo, and then time. he just went Wah. Yeah. There's yes. a new voice for a new character. Yes. <sighs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. The inflection was slightly different. <laughs> well, I mean, Although they're, they, not, they're not against reusing things like that for Yoshi. I think Yoshi's Wally World was oh the first God. time they re-recorded new lines for Yoshi since Yoshi's story on yes. the N64. Yeah, they, 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 they have just been Yoshi, reusing Yoshi sound bits for years. Oh my God! Yeah. But Yoshi was also like not exactly a massive seller, so like they're like, True. why invest? And not, uh, I mean, Mario more uh diversity in his his range of emotions like, like have they ever recorded a new sucking sound for kirby no no, no. that's that's <laughs> i, I actually like one. even in smash Bros. <laughs> ultimate i swear it's the same sucking sound from the game boy it, it, <laughs> i think it, i think the first two smash games had a different sucking sound and then they as like a design choice went I mean, back to like the game cleaner, board, right like i'm pretty sure that's yeah. the sound effect it's a vacuum yeah pretty much a vacuum sound yeah but or and then they're like, oh, yeah. let's go back to this uh, the the classic Game Boy sound effect, so that uh, for, for yeah. it's a stylistic choice, right? A stylistic so. choice. It also <laughs> happens to be super easy and a really small file size. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Ah, <laughs> oh, Kirby. See, guys, yeah, you ever want to know? Yeah, here, here's the thing: as long as Sakurai's alive, you'll never have to worry about Kirby getting proper treatment because he'll always get proper treatment in Smash games. If you're a Kirby mm-hmm. fan, don't worry about the actual Kirby games being made now. Sakurai's got nothing to do with those. But you want to see Kirby treated with respect? Why is he always the lead hero in a Smash game? <laughs> know your Kirby history. Come on now. Well, well, Sakurai claims it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. It's just he claims it. the character you invented is always like the primary right. hero. Not Mario. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. can't be Mario, the mascot. That would make sense. Yeah. Oh no, no, it's Kirby. At oh, least everyone gets booted away. And who's the left? Option who's between left? Mario and Kirby. Uh, everyone gets booted uh, away, and who's left? Oh, it's Kirby. <laughs> Of course, Kirby's left the one that's going to save the day. Outrun it. So <laughs> his ability. He was busy saving Pikachu. That's why. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why Sonic dies. He was busy trying to save Pikachu. Kirby's too selfish. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the grand Kirby. takeaway for this podcast. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Kirby is Damn too selfish. Kirby. Yeah. Damn it. All right, folks. So I think it's going to wrap yeah. it up here for episode four of the Nintendo Pride Podcast. Uh, I want to thank our special guest, Captain Bergeson, for coming on. Uh, do you Thank have any, you for having me. any new content or appearances you're going to be on that you can let them know about? Oh, of course. So you can always check out my channel. It's yep. just called Cap Bergerson. I do a lot of Zelda videos, um, yes. and I just wrapped up a dungeon design analysis series on Ocarina of Time, and it's a great. It's one of the most fun series I've worked on. I, I genuinely love I'm it. I'm sure it's um, am- epically amazing, and I'm jealous that you still don't make videos for my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I spread myself quite thin sometimes, to be honest. Um, other than that, though, you can always find me on Game Over Jesse's channel and the Hylian Gamescast, which is a very nice Zelda-centric podcast. Uh, it's not quite as well-rounded Nintendo. but uh, and, and occasionally I, I do some scripting and editing and voicing for, for videos there, too. So um, you, pretty much in every video of his, I at least had a hand in it even though it's not always obvious, um, but usually it's even just consulting or, or tweaking sure, his scripts yeah. and stuff. So, or fact checking him. So, um, oh, yeah. so you're the one that I was wondering who fact checked for him. <laughs> I kept thinking, I'm like, uh, okay, I some guess, of these yeah. things you're saying, uh, Jesse, I remember you, someone's fact checking you because you used to get a lot of stuff yeah. wrong and now suddenly you're not. 
Hmm. Oh. Well, I can't. Oh. Uh, the Jesse's a super smart guy. I can't take all the yes, credit. End up, end yeah. Well, especially now. He now, knows. He's doing a lot better now this year. Obviously, I'm mm-hmm. not going to get into the stuff that happened last year. He was t- talking to me about it. It's pretty rough. But um. Yeah, he had a rough year, but yes. uh, this year has been been going pretty well on that on the channel there. So it's oh, yeah. uh, he's, he's almost to a hundred thousand. You guys should go subscribe to yes. to Game Over Jesse and subscribe to Captain yeah. Ferguson. And mm-hmm. I don't know anyone else you want to shout out while you're here. We got an audience um, for like three thousand or so watching. <laughs> Oh gosh, I I don't know. The pressure's too high. The pressure's too high. <laughs> <laughs> any any Twitter or anything like that? Um, social media? Yeah, of course. Besides any YouTube? any and all social medias: Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. I do live streams of of Zelda as TikTok. well, among other games. Um, on my Did Twitch it, channel, also yeah. Capped Burgerson. So it's great. All right. Well, thank it's you. A good guys. time. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was a fun podcast. Uh, yeah. And I'll catch you up. I don't know whenever I catch you again. You and okay, your you and racing cool. chair. I'm jealous. Yes, <laughs> there it's, we my go. Fa- it's my favorite color. Ugh. It's it's good. It I is. chose blue. All right, folks, you go. <laughs> you can check out the podcast uh, on all of your favorite podcasting places. Uh, we have the audio version on literally everything from Spotify uh, through iTunes, Google Play. Every it, it's literally anywhere that you potentially have ever thought to listen to podcasts before. Just look up Nintendo Prime Podcast. If you are listening to the audio version, you have to check out the video version. Be sure to check over our YouTube channel, Nintendo Prime. Uh, just search it right in the search, and it'll pop up. Uh, we have a video version that I think looks pretty good outside of the fact that we're totally not on camera right now but yep. we're having some malfunctions uh, new camera uh, I, we have a new camera so there's some quirks I gotta sort out with it like why it's still on on the camera but not through the HDMI cable I don't know there's probably some setting I gotta mess with but it's okay I promise we will be back on camera in full next week because I will sort it out even if I have to get up every 10 minutes and hit record I'll make it happen so don't worry, folks. I got you. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Catch you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>